Have you guys ever went to the modes of the sub ability section and went, what are the best modes in this section? Well, that's what this video is all about. So in this video, we're breaking every single sub ability mode from worst to best. And I am going to be calling them mode awakenings because why not? So if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, and subscribe to the video, guys. All right, so we're starting off with the terrible tier here. Now, starting off with the terrible tier is going to be Puppa Platinum. It has low stats. It's really hard to combo extend with the mode and mainly people just use it for a little bit of extra M1 damage. Next up is going to be Santa Platinum. Now, Santa Platinum is more used for damage than Puppa Platinum, but it kind of feels the same exact thing that Puppa Platinum actually does. Now, Cobra Stretch Mode. Now, Cobra Stretch Mode does actually have buffed M1s. So I'm going to boom, 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 boom. It does actually have half buffed M1s. But the actual mode itself is very hard to combo extend with just because it knocks back so far. You have to generally use other moves to combo extend, and that is just really not that great when you consider some of the other Z specs in the game. Now, Inner Finite Spirit is going to be on here mainly because Inner Finite Spirit, while it is still kind of spammable and it still does a lot of damage, it's really hard to hit on people in general and the stats are terrible. Now, Divination is actually going to be in here. Now, Divination in general, I actually do feel like it's a very, 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 very good mode. Now, by very good mode, I actually mean that it's really not that good anymore. They nerf the auto dodge chance so that it barely auto dodges anything. Generally, you're only going to avoid one attack out of an entire combo. And as you guys might imagine, one attack out of a combo is not that good. Plus, the Z spec isn't that good and the stats are terrible. Now, Backer Spirit's also going to be going into the terrible tier. Now, Backer Spirit in general really is not that good, especially the Z2. It's kind of just a glorified Electro Blade, and that's kind of all it is. Spider Curse Spirit is also could be going here now this is actually a really fun trolling mode because you can infinitely stun people by spam clicking on them but for actual pvp content it's obviously really not that great now captain joke guys also could be going to here because it doesn't really have a case now in the game since strong block actually exists on you know actual passives in the game but it does have the stronger block so in case you actually want to have stronger block i mean it is here in this game in case you don't want to use gso but please keep in mind that the actual m1s knock back insanely far the actual specs of it are quite bad and in general there's just a lot better to do with the Captain Jokai. I heard if you like the video right now, you get 50 million times luck getting the best mode awakenings in the game. So hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. All right, so the next tier is going to be the below average tier. Now, in this tier, we're going to be do starting it off with Gen 1 Tailed Beast. Now, it has been confirmed that these will never be getting Baron mode. So, um, I guess Gen 1 in general, you're just going to only be using these for the drip. Just because, you know, since obviously they're never going to be including Baron mode, these mode these modes will obviously always be better worse than the Gen 2 modes and by worse i mean like genuinely significantly worse because the baron mode is kind of the only reason why the other ones are actually worth using in general now next is going to be vapor inner spirit now i was actually considering putting this into the average tier or not but the reason why it's going to be below average because the stats are terrible this is what i like to call a dueling mode there's not many of them in the game but this is actually one of them just because the stats are so low but the actual ability of vapor inner spirit is amazing it's a place luck stun that is instantaneous it, it's like imagine a bankai stun but it's instant it's, it's, it's a really really good ability in general but the issue is that the sense of stats are so low it would actually make you do significantly less damage when you're actually stacking it with other modes which you will be doing now up next is going to be the demon gate spirit in the below average tier now this is for honestly a main reason of it's actually a really hard to use mode in general the actual last two modes of it are also quite bad people generally when they use demon gate spirit they only use probably like four five and six i would say just because they are they are instant ones so you can actually combo extend with them quite well if you actually know how to you know combo with knockback and all that stuff it's also worth mentioning that since the last two ones are actually bad these are the actual ones that have the insanely good stats so you're not you're gonna have pretty bad stats when using this as well so i would like to also call it a dueling mode now next is gonna be heavenly spirit now this is one that i, I was actually considering not inc including it to the average tier as well this mode is honestly pretty good now the only thing that is holding it back is the fact that the actual z spec has a lot of startup attached to it it's really hard to combo extend with just because it actually since the since the amount of startup is so insanely high generally you're only going to be using the z2 which is actually the counter so in general for heavenly spirit if they made the startup a lot less and made it a lot easier to hit people it would be definitely a lot better now next will be toad curse spirit now this is what i like to call a novelty mode like captive jokai mode wow look at that i'm white and green at the same time now this mode is a novelty just because it does give you more stats the more you're hit but by the time your stats get you know as high as they should you it won't even be worth using and then the z spec is also quite hard to use in actual combat so in general this is like what i like to call a a novelty mode it's fun to have it's fun to use sometimes that's about it now up next is gonna be nimbus fate form 3 now i actually do not have nimbus fate form 3 just so you guys know but i do have form 1 form 3 is basically just nimbus fate but it does more damage on the actual web spec than the z spec it's also worth mentioning 
think that Nimbus Fate in general isn't really that good. Um, when when you compare it to the uh other, when you compare it to the best fate in the game. Now this actually goes for all of the fate threes. All of the fate threes are going to be in the below average tier because while they do give you quite a bit of stats, uh, besides Dune's fate by the way, because while they do give you a lot of stats in general, it's going to be hard to use these abilities in combat. Now Reptile Curse Spirit is going to be a below average. Imagine in, imagine finite healing spirit, but just infinitely better. That's what this is. It's more spammy and that's just kind of better in general than what finite infinite spirit is now in the average tier is going to be starting off with Jin 10 gen 1 now the reason why 10 gen 1 is going to be in the average tier and not with the other 10 gen 2 is because the gen 2 actually has the insanely good traveling ability which is the z spec and gen 1 does not have the flying capabilities of gen 2 but in general they do share a lot of the same abilities it is honestly a pretty you know okay mode and that's why it's going to be an average tier now the average tier is going to be the tier where you know all of the modes that are just generally okay are going to be so i'm also going to be doing shot cloak in the average tier now the reason for this is because the z spec of shot cloak is actually really good for extending i think shot cloak is honestly one of the most underrated modes in the game even though it's only in the average tier it doesn't mean it's bad at all like this mode is very usable in fact i would actually use this mode in competitive specifically if it didn't drain an absolute ton of mode in competitive for some reason all the z modes drain 200 still it's still a thing but i would use this because the stats are insanely high it has a really good combo extending z spec in general it's just a really good mode now coming next is going to be the worm spirit of Awaken. Now, this is going to be here mainly because of the sucky, sucky Z spec. Now, even though the M1s do not stack with C specs anymore, you still can actually suck them in with this C with the Z spec, even though it doesn't stack anymore. So it's still generally a good ability. It's just not as good as it was before. Also, the stats are okay. Now, coming up next in the average tier is going to be my person, one of my personal favorite modes in the entire game. It's going to be Demonic Spirit. Now, the reason for this is because Demonic Spirit is like genuinely an insanely good mode for PvP. It's probably one of the best PvP modes in the game the only issue with it is that the cooldown is insanely long so you just need to keep that in mind when you're using it now last but not least in the average tier is going to be baron mode now you do this boom tetasion and obviously guys baron mode you have insanely high stats it's honestly just a really good mode in general now the reason why baron mode is so frowned upon in like just using it in general is because it's what i like to call a spam mode this mode how you kind of just use it in general is you hardcore spam it that's just how you use the mode now the issue with this mode is that obviously once you run out of it you can't use it anymore and i would also like to say that you probably like you'll definitely be frowned upon by using this mode but it doesn't mean it's a bad mode it is actually a really good mode you just need to keep in mind that you will end up losing all your mode you can't unmode from it or all that stuff and in general this is just one of those modes that you will just it's fun to use but in actual pvp while it actually is insanely good you probably should all right so the next tier is going to be the above average tier now these are going to be the modes that people generally view as being really good in the game now starting this off is going to be kagoku rabbit mode now if, if you guys are aware of what worm stage used to do it used to stack kagoku rabbit mode also stacks look at this 100 damage and m1 combo look look at the damage 100 damage and m1 combo i'd also like to say that the z spec of kagoku rabbit mode is also insanely good and i'm pretty sure it does also have a weapon spec like kagoku rabbit mode the fact it stacks is absolutely insane and it actually does have a really good z spec as well the fact that it stacks actually makes kagoku rabbit spirit worth using and it also has a very special interaction with kagoku that makes the m1s do more damage in general now dunes fate mode 3 is going to also be in the above average tier now the reason why i say mode 3 and not mode 1 is because the actual weapon spec of mode 3 does more damage than it does in mode 1 for some reason it does 90,000 damage instead of 60,000. i would also like to say that the z spec you can actually use but it's kind of hard to use sometimes so generally this is only going to be here for the actual weapon spec and the decent stat now up next in the above average tier is going to be the snake sage now the snake sage is actually a pretty good mode i actually um after i started using it in pvp a bit more i started to realize you know this is actually a really good mode in general the reason for this is because the actual m1s are quite good the z spec is also good because it has a ragdoll into the actual you know big damage amount the fact you can use the weapon spec and the snake does actually have a pretty good pretty big m1 range which is obviously a pretty you know good plus i do actually think that the snake sage throwable is a lot better than i gave it credit for not the buffed throwable the buffed throwable is pretty terrible in my opinion but the non-buffed throwable of snake sage is actually quite good so you could actually do a full snake sage m1 combo into the throwable so boom into the throwable and then you could actually do the z spec afterwards into that into another m1 combo so there actually is a combo with the mode that does a lot of damage to them in general the throwable is a lot better than i gave it credit for so i am going to be putting this in the above average tier because i actually do think that this mode has a quite a lot of you know good sides to it now up next is going to be the jaramaki toad rework now this rework is basically just the naramaki rework but it actually creates bubbles from this effect now the reason why i'm going to be putting it on this list and i'm, I'm also going to be showing naramaki there 
they're going to be in the exact same tier because they're basically the same exact you know mode but the narumaki mode is actually better it's actually better to combo extend with in general it has better m1s than you know the, i feel i feel like the z spec of jeremaki is significantly worse because the fact it creates bubbles is definitely worse than being able to combo extend i would also like to say that the throwable isn't really as good as i thought it was i think they reduced the they increase the amount of time it takes to hit the full bar of the actual throwable so it's definitely a lot worse than i thought it was so i do actually think that while this mode is above average snake sage is definitely better now last but not least in the above average tier is going to be tin tails gen 2 now i do not actually have the second mode you have to kill the boss to get the second mode now the reason why i'm going to be putting these here is because it's actually a really really good bloodline i actually do think the mode one is better for pvp and mode two is better for pve content because mode one obviously has the combo senders in general Dude, Tin Tails, I feel like people are, you know, hardcore, you know, downing this for no reason. The the, the Z1 mode in, in the PvP aspect of it is absolutely insane. 10,000 damage, non-knockback M1s, a throwable that does a ton of damage. It, it, the fact that you could combo extend off the abilities is also an absolute major plus. Like I'll show you right now. M1 combo, boom, into the throwable. I mean, into not into the throwable, to the web spec, boom. And then you could extend off of it again. And then you could use a Z spec afterwards. Like, it does a lot of damage if they know how to perfect block you won't be able to get the full damage amount off but also i would also like to say that the actual z spec does play slot but th this mode is definitely very underrated it would be broken tier but the z2 mode obviously does have its issues other than traveling now the last and final tier as the best tier of the best mode awakenings in the game is going to be the broken tier now in this tier we'll be starting off with akuma eternal hand here now the reason why i'm going to be starting off with this is because it is actually one of the best mode awakenings in the entire game you know hence why it's in the broken tier now the reason for this is because it, first of all it drains barely any mode the z-spec is an instant counter and the actual it does give you a second life that's pretty much the only thing it is like you could stack other modes with this so easily just because it drains 10 mode if you guys are unaware of how broken that is you can use bankai kuma c3 plus akuma eternal hand and it still drains less mode than using a lot of the c's modes in the entire game two modes two modes by the way it drains actual less than some of the modes in the game that is ridiculous considering that this mode is actually quite good when stacked with other modes considering the fact that it actually has an instant counter and an instant you know second life when you actually get low now up next is going to be the jin shiki god awaken mode now this is actually one of the most forgotten modes in the entire game this mode is genuinely an insanely good mode first of all the m1s are you know really good in general uh, i would actually like to say that the main reason why it's going to be in the broken tier is going to be for the z spec now if the z spec is basically an auto dodge that, that's like the easiest way of explaining it's like an auto, instant auto dodge ability so imagine the kuma eternal hand but it, instead of a counter it's an auto dodge also this actually has a really good throwable that does a lot of damage to people and gets you out of combat so when you go up in the air use the throwable it's actually a lot harder to hit you in general plus the weapon spec is basically just an instantaneous high damage ability that actually is a it, it's an instant stun that's the best way of explaining it now when you hit the full mode of the actual z spec it actually will give you this super big damage ability in general but the fact that you have to climb up to it does make it a little bit worse than it would be otherwise just because the actual easiest way to use the z spec is to hit it on someone and immediately use the weapon spec to stun them so they actually get hit by it so he, he up he's charging up my z spec here nice so now that my z spec is charged up i'm gonna go ahead and use the z spec when the cooldown's off all right so here's a good example of how to use the z spec you could use any stun to the z spec i'm actually just gonna do an m1 combo so i'm gonna m1 combo z spec and yeah it does have a lot of delay which is generally why you have to stun and when you start stacking with a bunch of abilities it does a lot of damage it's also really good for pve content because it does do a lot of damage to the bosses as well now of course in the broken tier is going to be snail sage now some people seem to be mistaken about this mode this mode is nuts even after the nerfs it will still remain broken as a mode it just won't be unkillable now so the main the main honestly i'm gonna be honest with you the main reason why this mode is just so, it's so good is honestly because of the fact that it can heal you with taking barely any chi you can still do your entire combat sequence while healing and it like it should in my opinion it should drain as much chi as you can actually regen like look i'm taking all this damage and i still only have half chi and max hp still and the fact that you could actually use it you could use an iframe and recharge your chi as you're also simultaneously healing it's a huge thing to do and also the z spec is in absolutely insane at t fights because the fact that it actually regens their hp 
it actually revives them as well. Also, the M1s of Slug Sage are actually quite good. So the M1s here, boom, they're ranged 10,000 damage M1s they actually have a bubble effect afterwards. So that's also the reason why the actual weapon spec is so good. So I mean, like the, the next logical nerf for Slug Sage is actually nerfing the M1s, which if the mode is still broken, that'll be the next logical step instead of, you know, making the other abilities absolutely unusable. But that doesn't even get me started on the throwable, which is infinite mode, because it actually regeds more mode than you take. And the reason why it actually is infinite mode is because the fact that the cooldown is so low means that if you're using it every single moment that it's up you're actually regenning more mode than you're losing it's a 12 second cooldown by the way it also gives you chi and hp back so i'm going to show you guys the actual z spec the fully charged z spec here so the fully charged z spec it's going to be hard to show you guys but i'm going to head and i'm going to use it on me so boom it, it gives you a bunch of hp back it gives you it regens all of your squad it's on honestly slug sage is just a really good team fighting mode and it's honestly too good right now it's so good to the point where it's actually good for 1v1s and not just team fights by the way guys what is your favorite mode awakening in the game for free top gods below we'll be checking them out now last but not least in the broken tier is going to be maru slash appall spirit now these are obviously absolutely insanely good modes i don't actually have the final one so boku will pop it up on the screen for you guys these modes have absolutely insane damage abilities now the reason why i people generally use the final mode is because it's a it's actually really hard to hit you when you're holding block if you're holding block in the actual final mode it is absolutely insanely hard to hit you in general i would also like to mention that the actual abilities of these are you know <laughs> the actual abilities of the final mode are also really hard to, you know really really hard to avoid in general because they actually are just massive damage aoe abilities now in general when people use those like i said they use it for the m1s and the ability to avoid m1s and they actually the z spec is also quite good anyways guys if you enjoyed this video remember to like subscribe we'll see you guys bye bye